Be It's been an extraordinary time for six teenage mums. Well done. They've worked hard, supported throughout by expert nannies. We've got to put that aside, that you need more sleep. The situation has changed. You've had a baby. And a psychotherapist. How does that make you feel? It hurts. It's horrible. It's all right. It's been too tough for some. <laughs> Zoe left after losing her temper, and Amy gave up after just three days. I thought I'd be OK, but I now, the four remaining girls have just two days to change themselves and their children's lives. It's very tiring. <laughs> and time is rapidly running out. It's not that I don't want to do it, because I do want to do it. He just doesn't fucking let me! For seven days, the teen mums have been given round-the-clock advice and support from Susie, a maternity nanny with 25 years' experience. Good morning, my dear. Morning. Let's have a look at him. Has his eyes been a bit sticky the last couple of days? It was yesterday and today. Yesterday and today. And they've Ashley like... had a miscarriage when she was 15 and became a mother at 16. Now at 17, she's pregnant again. Sit up. Ashley's found looking after 10-month-old Tyler a constant struggle. She's battled with Susie. He will learn through you. I know. You say you know what I mean. Let me show you. Oh, forget it. I know what you mean. And has had problems bonding with her son. <coughs> but there have been moments when she's appeared to be making progress, particularly when she's talked with therapist Rachel. Really could just imagine how Tyler was feeling. Come on, then. But for Ashley, the real battles with baby Tyler are played out at mealtimes. I am not putting it in your mouth for you. <laughs> with time fast running out, Susie wants to tackle things head on. Hi. What I find that's happening in the last couple of days is that you are not wanting to do things with Tyler. What you're saying to me is, he won't do this, he won't do that, he won't do this. I'm showing you that child in the chair and he's doing everything you're saying that he's not doing. And this and is where it's... I know that sometimes he just doesn't want me to feed him, he'd rather have someone else feed him. Yeah, but... Or some... feed himself. Yeah, but Ashley... He, started, he starts crying when he puts his hand I'm in I'm going to be honest with you, I just feel it's excuse after excuse after excuse and it's such well, a shame. Well, that's how he's been with me his entire life. All I want, Ashley, is to help you in the future with the new baby coming to make life a bit easier for yourself. That negativeness is coming out in you every single time, and it's such a shame. He wasn't letting me feed him. People saw that he wasn't letting me feed him. Could he sense that you don't want to do it? It's not that I don't want to do it, because I do want to do it. He just doesn't fucking let me! Well, why don't you let me sit with you and we, and we train him? And we do Fuck it. Fuck off! It's starting to piss me off now. Ashley, I'm only trying to help you. The chat with Ashley went as I expected it to go. Um, she's been making excuses ever since she came here. It's because she rushes him. It's because she's not interacting with him properly. There is not this bond. He senses this and he's rejecting her and that's what she can't cope with. Over the last two weeks, the girls' timetable has been packed. Look over here and tell me what could be a potential danger to your child. There's all the um, shampoos and everything on there. They could swallow him. Oh. After lunch. They've learnt the basics, such as improving their children's diets. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. Practice skills they'd never encountered, like baby yoga. Very gently to begin with. Swing backwards and forwards. <laughs> no? Tried power pramming, exercise classes for new mums. So weight going down through your heels, working your bottom and thighs. There's some and develop their baby's communication skills. Wave bye bye. Now that is baby signing because you're saying a word and you're giving a visual cue at the same time. Around about twelve, she's going to be tired. With just a few days left, 
Susie's keen to work one-on-one -on -one with each mother. It's brilliant having a nanny like on call and everything. Hey, we know you're achieving. Hey, look. She just helps you so much. She knows everything about everything as well. It's like you only have to ask her a question and she knows the answer. So you've really got to massage it in because you've really got to lift the cradle cap up off from a scalp. Many of the problems the girls face are due to their age. But 16-year-old Kerry faces a challenge every new mum can relate to. I'm still tired. <laughs> Kerry is very unsure whether to leave the baby. She keeps the baby in bed with her. She lacks confidence in herself, which is quite evident. I think she's just naive onto a lot of aspects of childcare. I used to drink a lot when I was about 14. I used to go out a lot with my friends and just get drunk in the streets. And then I stopped that when I met Aaron. Care is the only teen mum who's still in a relationship with the father of her baby. I had a bit of a reputation before I met Kerry, and I kind of went all funny when I met Kerry. And all my mates did take the piss out of me quite a lot. We waited to have sex like um, two, for two months. Um, it was my first time, but not his. One night, her mum went away for the weekend, and it all fell into place. Pretty good night as well. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old Aaron's still at school and lives with his mum and dad. He spends two evenings a week with Kerry in her mother and baby unit, but the rest of the time, she's on her own. It's just so hard working everything around her all the time. She won't sleep through the whole night in her Moses basket. I really regret it since she was born. I just put her into my bed because she wouldn't sleep in the cot. And I wish I'd never done it now because I can't get her in there now. With only a few nights left to help Kerry, Susie wants to get Millie sleeping in a cot. She finished feeding now? Yeah. Yeah, and she's winded okay? Yeah. Okay, would you like to swaddle her for yeah. me? Yeah. <clears throat> the reason we swaddle Kerry is because, as you know, when Millie came to the house, she wasn't used to being put down to sleep. One way of dealing with that is swaddling because it makes her feel safe or secure. The reason like, we do this is that we get her into the cot. She gets used to that, especially in her room, and she looks up. But not everyone's taking Susie's advice. The youngest teen mum, 14-year-old Chelsea, is rebelling. She followed Susie's routine for over a week, but now she wants to do it her own way, feeding on demand. She's a baby and she needs to be fed when she's hungry as well as a routine sort of thing. Like, the other day it was horrible when she was crying around herself for food and I couldn't feed her because she's young and she needs her food. It's now 7.30. All the babies are in bed, tucked up, fast asleep. But Chelsea's still walking around with Holly. And this has been happening every night since she wanted to do demand feeding. There are different schools of thought, but Susie believes that babies should eat and sleep at set times. It's very important to establish a routine. What it does for you, it gives you confidence as a mum. It also helps you to know your baby's needs. Chelsea's decided to feed Holly whenever she cries for food and lets her sleep until she wakes naturally. I can't get her to sleep. What do you think's happening now that she's sleeping during the day and being carried? What do you think's happening of an evening now with her? She thinks that's what should happen in the evening and she's not as tired because she slept so much in the day. Yeah. She has a thing in her head about demand feeding um, and I think it's confused her a bit. Sometimes with mums of that age, it's a question of a bit of laziness. I think her attitude is, well, I come from a really good loving and supporting family. You know, when I go home, they do that. When I found out I was pregnant, I wasn't pleased. I was like, oh no, mum and dad are going to kill me. When we first found out, it was like Chelsea was so immature, you know, and that was a difficult thing to take on board, I think, because, you know, I just couldn't imagine my baby having a baby. Chelsea and her boyfriend were both 13 and had been going out for over a year. It wasn't planned. Uh, it was my birthday party when it happened. The condom did split. I was very unlucky. I hadn't been having sex with my partner very long. It was the second time. If she'd been around the village with every Tom, Dick and Harry, I think it might have been a little bit of a different opinion, but I knew the situation. She'd been with the boyfriend a long time. She'd made a mistake and she was unlucky. 
Chelsea and her boyfriend have now split up, and she relies heavily on her parents' help. I think we're being good parents by supporting her now. I mean, ideally, we wouldn't want her to be in this position, but she's in it. But without her parents' support, or Susie's routine, Chelsea's struggling. She's working quite often and um, probably about every three hours or four. And it's very tiring. <laughs> With just two weeks to learn the secrets of good parenting, four teenage mothers have been working hard on making better choices for themselves and their children. That is going to have contact with the baby's mouth. Do not put your hands on that. Today is the last day of their two-week intensive parenting course. And Chelsea's rejection of the nanny's routine has had predictable results. Last night I was up. About four times a day, I think. She was up at three o'clock for a bottle, then five, and then seven, and she didn't seem to want to go back to sleep. She was in bed with me and everything. But Kerry's getting on much better following the routine. She's had a good night's sleep, and baby Millie's just gone down for her morning nap. She's meant to be sleeping now, and she's just gone to sleep, just on time. <laughs> it's really strange. I don't know how it's worked. It does really actually feel like a miracle. Do you want to give him something now for dinner and then we bath him? It's your choice. No, not really. Just walking through there made me feel even worse, so... He's going to get very tired, he's going to have his dinner and just fall straight asleep. All right. Yep. Okay. Ashley still can't face the feeding Nothing battles with baby Tyler. Oh, he can come out of my face as well! <laughs> Ashley, Ashley, listen, I know you're tired. You're a bit irritable. I need to take it out on everyone, OK? If you can remember really... Rachel wants Ashley to look ahead and broaden her horizons. If everything went right and everything was perfect in your perfect world, what would happen when you went home? Nothing would go wrong. OK, close your eyes. Now I'm going to ask you to imagine that you're standing in front of your front door with all of your bags and Tyler. You're not allowed a single negative thought. You've walked in and there's even sun streaming in through the windows. It's great to be home. Then you wind the days forward a couple and you're getting into the routine. Yeah, the flats are noisy. The session yeah, runs for over an hour. Around. Instead of complaining about the things that are going wrong, you're asking yourself, how you can make them go differently. Maybe you could even dream, really dream. Maybe you could set yourself up in business. Something I've been wanting to do for a while. OK. Then let's just wind the years on. Wind it on. It's five years in the future. I want you to see yourself with your little business. Maybe you've got your driving licence and a car. I want you to look at that, Ashley, for a moment so that just for a moment you know what it's like to feel really confident, successful, happy. You can open your eyes. What was that like? Really different. <laughs> it's a really good day. I actually saw where I want to be. The girls leave tomorrow. It's Susie's last chance to convince Chelsea that establishing a set routine makes sense for her and her baby. Now, I know you want to do demand feeding, but the last few days it's gone a bit haywire and I only just want to emphasise the fact that once you get home, this will continue and you may have created a nightmare for yourself. Well, if I say so I carried this through to do this, what I'm doing on for a couple more days, see how it goes, and then if it still wasn't working out and I was having sleepless nights and stuff, I'd probably try to start bringing it back into the routine. Why would you not do it now? Because I'd like to try and do it how demand feeding, because I found that easier before. She's a very young mum with a very young attitude. If she was to leave without any backup or support, I'd be very concerned. No, don't want it. Oh, you do want it. Chelsea will get lots of help when she's home, but Ashley 
desperately needs to sort out Tyler's mealtimes before she leaves. Hello, young man. Hello. Are you waiting for Ashley's me? second baby is due in just four months' time. When he does start playing around, all children do. It's a natural thing. Yeah. But it's you saying, I'm not going to go, I am going to feed you, and you will eat. But just watch me. No. Mm -hmm. Just want it. Mm -hmm. It's not all the time he plays up, but when he does, he just won't let me feed him. Yeah, yeah. Ashley, what I'd like you to do is I want you to take the plate, OK? Just take the spoon now and start feeding him. Tyler. Tyler, look at Mummy. Tyler. 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 Look at Mummy. Sis. Uh, Tyler. Tyler. What's this? Good boy. Good boy. That's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how's it feel now that you're feeding him now? Feels OK. Yeah. It's going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. It makes more sense now. He's just doing what he wants to do because he knows no better. My accent. She's been a bit more positive. Um, the wall is actually coming down a bit more now. <laughs> I hope this week it's opened her eyes to his needs. <laughs> It's their final night at Rutland Tower. As a treat, the teen mums are having a pamper party with a makeup session and a chance to try on some new clothes. It will just help define your eyes a bit. And also, if you've had a long night with Tyler, <laughs> it will make you feel much better. But like most teenagers, they're hard to please. OK. I don't need to do that. That looks like that will fit you. I really don't like that colour. <laughs> OK, well. We're just trying things, aren't we? I would not wear that. <laughs> oh, no. no <laughs> You're just no, trying no, no, it. You're no, just no, trying no. it. Don't like that either? Where's what that do you from? Like? That would be nice for you. And I like the colours because they're quite bright and girly. And also, if the baby's sick, you won't notice it. <laughs> Give it a try. I feel like I'm wearing shorts. I like it. That one I like. Oh, that's nice. Getting them out of their comfort zone, yeah. that's the hard part. It looks nice on Kerry, but I wouldn't wear it myself. Oh, you've done well then. <laughs> Success. I like that. Even with the That paint. does look nice. The girls have had an emotional and rewarding two weeks, but now it's time for them to leave. I don't really want to go home. Because when I'm at home, I'm like on my own. So I get bored. So it's just nice to have people around me all the time. I'm gutted that I've got to go now. I've had such a good time. I just want to say well done to you all. Ashley, I'd like to come to you. I know it's not been easy for you, but I just feel you have gained a lot more. There is a difference with Tyler as well. And that reflects back on you as a mum. I know there's more we have to do, and that will be done in the future. But I just want to say, well done and congratulations. You've come a long way. Thanks. Chelsea, I know that you really struggled. In fact, when you first came here, I looked at you and I thought, that's the mother most likely not to stay the course. You were the youngest, and I know you really struggle with homesickness. It took a lot for you to stay. And I just want to say congratulations and thank you. Kerry, I'd like to come to you. Where do I start? Here was this young girl, very timid, very frightened, very unsure. I'm now looking at you today and I feel quite emotional because I look at you and you're a different girl. And you've... You've done really well. You all have, but you've really blossomed. Thank you. Kelly, when you first came here, I said to you that you would get out of this what you put in. You gave everything you had and it was really tough. And you've now got all the skills that you need to go out there and live the life, give the life to yourself and your daughter that you deserve. Thank you. 
makes me feel very pleased that you're going to take that knowledge away and be good mums with your babies and that's what it's all about and I just want to say well done to every single one of you because it's not been an easy journey. so much happier with Millie now because I'm more confident I just like feel more closer to her I've had a really close bond with her since I've been in here okay, see you soon. Okay. I've had low points where I wanted to go home and stuff but in another way I think this experience has made me more independent I've learned everything from Susie I've learned so much of her <laughs> I'll take her home with I don't know how I'm going to cope without it now. <laughs> While I've been here, I've had arguments with Susie. It's been quite a rough ride, actually, talking to Susie while I've been here. It's just... It's just because I refuse to listen sometimes. <laughs> They are teenage mums, but given the right support and the encouragement and the backup, then it can really change things for them. 